Hey there, welcome or welcome back to my channel, The Yana and the Book Hunt. Today I'm going to be really quiet because my baby is literally sleeping a couple of meters away from me. I'm recording this this late because I actually did a recording of this video this morning and it turned out to be crap. Um, for some reason the lighting was really bad, so I just want to redo this and be able to post it. Anyway, um, I want to wrap up the readathon that I participated in this weekend. I um, participated in the Twisted and Taboo readathon, which was organized by five wonderful ladies that I follow on BookTube and Instagram. Um, we have Jess from Peace Love Books. We have McKay from OA It's McKay. We have Cheyenne from That Tall Book Girl. We have Tori from Novel Life and we have Sam from Sam Reads A Little. These five ladies, they organized this dark romance readathon that started on the 16th and ended on the 19th of September and I gladly participated in it because it kind of also got me out of a reading slump to be honest because I was kind of not enjoying any of the books that I was picking up and then I knew that dark romances typically really work for me and uh, a lot of the prompts that were introduced were ones that I'm interested in so I knew that I had to participate um, for this readathon, the idea was to pick up dark romances as many as you can within the couple of days within the readathon and just stick to a couple of prompts and genres or tropes, if you will, um, that are common within um, the dark themed taboo and twisted romances. The prompts that were given, I'm just going to go ahead and pull them up because there was a bingo card which was very nicely made. Um, we have Motorcycle Club, Age Gap, we have Mafia, Serial Killer, Captor Captive, Stalker, Coach Athlete, Daddy and Bully. I managed to cross off almost all of them. I just didn't manage to read a serial killer themed book. All of the others I managed to cross off. So I'm really happy about that. And I'm really happy that all of the books that I chose, almost all of them were four or five star reads for me. So this was a really successful readathon for me all over. Um, so yeah, let me just tell you about the books that I picked up. Um, I picked up in total one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books, which is amazing. Um, I'm really happy with the turnout um, because like I mentioned, most of the books were ones that I really enjoyed. The first one that I picked up is by an author that I've heard so much about. Um, it's Tate James. Tate James has a very popular series, which is a reverse harem series called the Madison Kate series and I have that on my TBR. I want to finish that series but it's four books so I'm kind of putting it off until I get in the mood for it. But when I was looking up the uh, tropes that I need to focus on for the readathon I found out that Tate James actually has a spin-off series to the Madison Kate series which starts with the first book Seventh Circle. That's the book that I picked up. That book, when I saw that it has so many themes that are kind of overlapping with the prompts that I'm following for the readathon, I knew that I was going to pick this one up. And I'm really happy that I did because I gave this book four stars. It was really amazingly done, very engaging. Um, we have a motorcycle club. I'm not sure whether the motorcycle club will be introduced later on, but a lot of people on Goodreads marked it as a motorcycle club series. Um, but we definitely have Mafia, Age Gap, it's Reverse Harem, it's Dark. And we have a badass heroine within the book, which I absolutely am a sucker for. Um, the main heroine, Hades is um, actually the Mafia's boss within this book. It's so refreshing to have a Mafia boss who is a female within a book. I absolutely love the aspect, uh, this aspect of the book. Um, we have three love interests at the moment. Um, we have Zed, who is Hades' best friend from her childhood. She 
used to really like him but because i think that their relationship as friends is more important to both of them they never kind of acted on their attraction towards each other we have Cass, i believe his name is he is kind of a um what do you say he's part of the mafia i mean not a rival but kind of like a subsidiary to hades's mafia situation um she at the beginning of the book introduced um us to the fact that she likes him and that she kind of threw herself at him but she, he rejected her but then eventually he kind of started to grow back to her because we do find out that he likes her as well and the third love interest is lucas who is this new kid on the block who kind of gives a fresh um spin to the whole romance story within the book he is very sweet um but also very um forward when it comes to his feelings towards hades he wants to work at her strip club which is seventh circle and she's like yeah you look kind of young i don't know if i should corrupt you in this way uh, but eventually she gives in and things develop from there um within the book we have so much plot so much fast past act of fast paced action where uh, people are trying to get um hades thrown off of her position as a mafia boss we have people who are making deals which are outside of the principle that she is trying to maintain and we just have a lot of things going on that are absolutely keeping you as a reader very engaged with the story and i definitely want to continue on with the series because it sounds like such an amazing read um the second book that i picked up is actually a novella this novella is my favorite novella out of the all of all of the novellas that I read for this readathon. It's by Cassie Mint. Uh, I've heard a lot of Cassie um, Mint novellas are really spicy, but then they also have a plot within uh, a very short um, within a short amount of time because they're short novellas and i really love that i mean i typically don't really like novellas very much because they tend to have insta love in them they tend to have a lot of kind of fast-paced action which kind of like a love story that develops in a day which i don't like but the story that i read here which is called thin eyes and i think i first saw it on rachel's channel from rachel reads and sings i think it's one of her favorite cassie mint novellas um I, I was really intrigued by it because it's a coach athlete uh, situation where we have an age gap between the two characters and we find out in the beginning that the um athlete um in this case the girl the figure skater she really likes her coach and she's kind of flustered when it comes to um bringing her routine around with her partner because she feels that he watches her um, but we also find out that he also is pining for her, but he knows that the relationship is forbidden. So he's kind of <laughs> feeling doomed by the whole situation. And there's a lot of pining and it's a really hot and spicy book. And it's really worth it because within 80 pages, we have an almost full, um, all round kind of packed story. Uh, that I absolutely enjoyed. It's a definite five star read for me, which is a surprise to me because typically I wouldn't rate novellas five stars, but this just ticked all the boxes for me. I absolutely loved it and I need to pick up more Cassie Ment novellas in the future. Um, next up, I read two Jessica Kane novellas. Um, one of them is a stalker novella the second one is a bully novella the first one is called my husband my stalker this one i think is um one of the ones that didn't really work for me because of the fact that the main heroine she was kidnapped at the beginning of the book by someone else who is not the hero so she had a lot of trauma that she needed to work through and then the hero actually saw her for the first time when she was giving an interview on tv 
and he became obsessed with her and decided that he had to have her. So he kind of made up a different identity for himself so that he can present himself to her and try to win her over. And it turns out that he stalks her. So the whole stalker situation I can get past, but the fact that he kind of manip manipulates her into being with him with the false identity really kind of bugged me. So at the beginning I was really struggling with getting on board with the romance between the two but then eventually I think the heroine kind of convinced me that he was good for her because she uh, kind of showed why he was good for her even though he's obsessive and he's a stalker. Um, she explained that he gave her confidence, that all the things that she has always wished for herself are things that he is convincing her that she is good enough to do. So eventually I think it works out for both of them to be together, but still the first part kind of bothered me, so I gave this one three stars. Um, the bully romance I did like. The bully romance is called Breaking the Bully, and this one is, I don't know if it's considered young adult or new, uh, new adult, to be honest, um, because I think they're still in high school, if I remember correctly. We have a hero who is absolutely obsessed with the heroine. They spend some time together, but she kind of blows him off. Um, meaning that they were kind of intimate, but then she blew him off. Uh, and I think he's a virgin. And um, he kind of really reacts badly towards the whole situation because he has a misconception of why she blows him off and then the bullying, bullying theme starts from that point. But then when he finds out why that situation occurred in the first place, um, he knows that he still wants her and that he needs to win her back. So that's where the groveling starts, which is one of my favorite parts within a book. So again, within a short amount of time, we have a lot of things going on within the story. So this I really did appreciate and that's why I gave this novella four stars. Now, the last novella that I picked up is my least favorite one. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it because I don't think it's worth um, the attention, it's called Caught by Daddy by Autumn Winter. This story is a stepfather, stepdaughter. Um, I don't think it's really a romance. It's a hot and heavy spicy book where we have almost no plot, actually no plot at all. We just have a situation where the stepfather and stepdaughter work towards having sex with each other. So it's really not, not very plot driven. So I gave this one two and a half stars. I don't know if it deserves it, to be honest. Maybe two stars is a fair um, assessment of this book, in my opinion, at least. So yeah, just not a favorite of mine. And then the last two books I'm going to discuss are my um, kind of gems that I picked up for this readathon that I absolutely loved. The first one is called Ruthless Creatures by J.T. Geisinger. This one I had on my radar for quite some time, but I saw just recently one of Jess's videos, I think, it was maybe a couple of months ago, that she posted that she absolutely loved the two books that she picked up, the first and the second one, uh, Ruthless Creatures being the first book, the second one is Carnal Urges, which I also finished. Both of these books are so great. Um, I mean, the first book, let me just start off with the first book. The first book centers on Nat and Cage, I think the male character is. Um, Nat, at the beginning of the book, um, is kind of grieving the fact that it's the fifth year anniversary from her, uh, the disappearance of her fiancé, and it's also at the same day that they were supposed to get married that he disappeared, so she really can't get over the whole ordeal with um, what has happened. And exactly on the fifth year anniversary uh, is where the main hero comes in, and um, he is part of the Russian Mafia. He's actually tasked with um, questioning her about something that involves her missing fiance and then getting rid of her 
but once he meets her he immediately becomes infatuated and obsessed with her and he decides that he's not going to kill her um basically they start to have some interactions with each other he kind of breaks down some of her barriers and um yeah eventually they just grow into having a relationship together even though he knows that it's the worst idea that he can have because being involved in the russian mafia having this assignment um not fulfilling the assignment may mean that um as well as his life as her life also is endangered so um this book is just so again fast-paced banter filled it's witty the writing is amazing we have a lot of um suspense also going on regarding what is happening with the missing fiance with how the mafia proceedings will go on um when the mafia boss finds out that she's not dead and just so much goodiness and so much amazing things and also the side characters um it was just amazing i didn't give it five stars because there was just one point within the book that i don't want to spoil that kind of irritated me and i knew that when i get to the second book because the second book centers on um, nat's best friend sloan and i kind of liked her in the first book already more than i did nat and i knew that her story will probably be a five star read for me I kind of couldn't give it five stars so i gave it four and a half stars and then moving on to the second book which is cardinal urges that one i gave five stars to i think it, it actually deserves more than five stars to be honest because the first book was amazing on all the levels i mentioned like writing banter wittiness humor uh, plot development suspense everything just ticked all the boxes ticked for me but this one took all those little factors to just a level higher than that. I absolutely love the story. Here we have a captor captive situation because Sloane at the beginning of the book is going to visit Natalie and Cage. Cage Kane, I don't know what his name was. To the Russian mafia guy. And she gets kidnapped on the way to them by the Irish mafia boss man whose name is Declan already from the start of the book they go at it they're like a cat and a dog and um they're both really intelligent in their banter and she gives more than i think he can take which i absolutely loved and the fact that he is the captor she is the captive kind of didn't make you feel like she's the victim because she's so strong within her position and she's so verbally <laughs> aggressive towards him that it kind of seems like she's the boss in the captor captive situation and not him which i absolutely loved um it was an amazing read i have to say that it will probably end up in my top 10 reads of the year because i was so entertained and i loved um all of the things going on within the book i love the last part um which is kind of the twist within the book um, that also worked for me so yeah this was the absolute winner for me when it comes to this readathon and I absolutely loved 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 it so to wrap up this wrap up I had a very successful readathon I want to thank the wonderful ladies that organized this readathon for making it so easy and so amazing and I think so many people participated in it because it was just so much fun and these themes just work for me when it comes to romance um yeah so i absolutely love taking part in it and whenever there is a next one i'm going to be taking part in it as well i hope you enjoyed this wrap up let me know if you've read any of the books that i've mentioned what you thought about them as always i wish you a very wonderful marvelous day happy reading take care and bye bye